site for lab link gotten into there so what we want to do is a quality control all right it's going to redirect me here shortly all right so what we want to do we want to create an event we want a new event We're going to do a QC because we don't want to do A1C. Optics check only. They'll be on days like wellness events. So we're going to do the full QC. Our event is created. We want to look at devices. So we have three choices. A1C, A1, well, we're not doing A1C. So we know those two are out. I only have one choice. Cardio check. All right. Okay, now we're in. Let's look here. What state are we in? We are in Kentucky. So you pick your state. I like to think of this as chasing the red. Kind of like what some market directors would say or as far as your cues. But we read what's in red and that'll help guide us along our way as far as what we need to do. Okay. If we're not doing any testing, we put three X's and today's date. Three point check, it's all in red. We better do that. Let's see what we're doing. I got an X902, X902. Install memo chip. X902. So we are good to go on that X. Not at the expiration date. Let's see what it is. One four of twenty one. So let's go to twenty one. January fourth. We're good. Temperatures in pink. We better do that. Uh, I just happen to have my thermometer here. Seventy two degrees. Let's do that. You do not have to record humidity for this. Serial number for the cardio check plus. You can see it right there. 5122150. Now it wants us to do a check strip. We want to abort our test. You push both buttons twice real quick and it'll abort the test. Then you can go back to the regular screen. Now we can look at things. I'm going to go to utility. That takes you forward. That selects check strip. I want to do that. Excellent. And one other thing you want to try to do, if at all possible, is to wear gloves. It's considered a best practice. And you know why you want to wear gloves? Because our hands get oily. If you get oil on your fingers, it's just natural secretions we do. We have oily fingers. And that can get on that reflective strip. The reflected strip, if it gets oily on it, it will not read very well at all, okay? That's a bad thing. So we're gonna go on, we're gonna run control. So we're going down to here, multi-chemistry lot, MC32. Once we put that in, it'll populate a lot of the information for us. Manufacturer expiration date, uh -oh, June, June 30th of 2020, so not too far down the road. 
the date you open the bottle, and you'll see in the red, it says typically you get 10 months after it's opened. So keep that in mind. This was opened November the 30th of 19. Let's find that. November 30th. Now you'll see, I don't know if you can notice this. I know we're a little bit distance-wise. You can see the expiration here. It gave... It gave 10 months from the date it was opened, but the expiration is shorter than that. So you always go with the shorter of the two dates. Very important. All right, let's keep it rolling. So now I put that lot in for the uh, control solution. It gives me my ranges. It auto-populates that information for us. Now what I need to do, you'll notice these have color codings. I think we know what the color coding's about now. If we use these, we put the information on the yellow side. If we use these, we put it on the green side. Um, from a cost effectiveness standpoint, these strips are a lot more expensive. When we do our monthly QC, we use the yellow strips, which I happen to have out. And I already have the memo chip in, so we're good to go. So we're getting ready to run our controls, which we just looked at. So it's, a it's prompting me to insert a strip. Ideally, you want to just keep this on the ground. I'm trying to help y'all see better. So the strip's in. Level one or low. You don't need very much. It should just suck it right in there. Which it did. It says testing. And we got us a 57. So I'm gonna log 57 on the yellow side. I'm going to move this off to this side so I don't accidentally pick it again. Enter. Use code. We already know that. Insert strip. Strip is inserted. I'm going to go with our level 2 or high control solution. Testing. You've got to get a little bit. You can watch it really just suck that in there when you've got it in the right spot. We've registered a 248. Let's log that in there. All right. We've gotten everything we need in there. We had no issues. So I'm going to anything. I will put my identification in here. Now at this point, let's say a technician were completing this QC. That's where they'd be done and they'd hit submit. And at that point, it would take it to pending regulatory review. It would not be complete. Keep that in mind. Then, once it's in that pending for regulatory review, a pharmacist would go back through, look over, make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to look. And then we would complete it at the bottom. Looks good to me. Okay. I put my information in. I hit submit there. It now says submitted down here. I can go home. I can look. So if we look at just events in general, this is kind of odd. It still shows as an event. You don't know what kind of event it is here though. So a lot of people, this is where they make the mistake. They look here and see it and they think they're done. But really, you need to go check and see if it's truly done. Let's go here. Completed forms. Well, there we go. Lo and behold, 420. And there's my second one because I've done a few of these today. All right. Let's go back to here. I'm going to just revisit that one for you. Pending data forms for regulatory review. This would be that one where somebody completed that top portion, not a pharmacist, and then that bottom part needs to be completed by the pharmacist. That's that regulatory review. That's what I just talked about. Incomplete, we just left some data off, like uh, possibly, let's say, you were doing this one, but 
somehow you didn't put your control solution information and you skipped all that and just put your results. That would definitely be incomplete. That is how we complete a monthly QC. Our goal for the region is to have these completed uh, the 15th of each month. I know some months are shorter and some are longer, but that is our baseline number. I would highly recommend that you set a reminder in your phone, maybe have a planner book in your pharmacy for all your staff to utilize and just have that date marked. And that way we get all these things and we get everybody just coordinated to where it's all the same time of the month. We've got everybody to understand how we complete this form. And then we can move on to some more important things. That is all I have for you guys right now. Listen, I want y'all to have a great day. We're going to be making more of these videos just to try to help you guys. And if there's anything you would like to have made, just reach out to the PCSMs and we will do our best to get that done for you. So thank you, everyone. Um, once again, I'm Andy Allen, one of the PCSMs, and we are here to help you guys to make everything run better. Just let us know what you need. Thanks, and have a great day.